I was, after all, professor of zoology for a while, and I'm interested in evolution. I think it's uh, very fascinating, and I think it's a great approach. And I actually felt intuitively, for what it's worth, that ATP was really a very primitive signaling molecule. So I started reading thoroughly the literature and doing a lot of comparative physiology experiments, and there's no doubt at all that um, certainly lower vertebrates, but also m nearly all the invertebrate groups, whether you're looking at cylindrates or annelids or insects or crustacea, whatever, there are huge responses to ATP, to GTP, um, to adenosine. Um, uh, and pharmacologically, there's even a hint that there's both P1, P2X, and P2Y in different systems. But nobody until recently had cloned any receptors in these primitive animals. But marvelously, in the last year or so, there have been two very important papers, uh, one showing that uh, what's called a social amoeba, dictostilium, uh, they cloned a receptor which is very similar in its molecular structure to P2X2 receptors in the mammal. And then, uh, just before this, a um, schistosome mansoni, which is a, a primitive parasite, uh, they cloned a receptor in this and showed that it's rather like the P2X4 receptor in the mammalian system. This is remarkable. Um, my own feeling and speculation was that I thought the adenosine receptor probably appeared first. I thought the P2Y receptor, another G-protein uh, couple, would probably, a slow responses, be next, and then P2X. But in insects, where there are very fast responses, P2X is important. And in some of the other systems where there's a nervous system, uh, it looks as though P2X emerged early too. But this is all very speculative at this stage. I'm hoping this is another area where people, in the growing number of people in the purinergic signaling field, will attack it and find out more about the evolution of this system. My own view is that uh, the way evolution works, if this was a, 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 a dominant molecule very early on, why should it not be simultaneously developed as an intracellular energy source and an extracellular signaling molecule? I mean, there's another amazing development. In the last year, there have been 10 papers showing that ATP acts on receptors in plants. And this is, uh, they're involved in, apparently, in the uh, mechanism of regeneration of damaged plants. Intriguing.